social pariah turned messiah. I am the misfit that doesn't know when to quit. I am the man without a plan. And in case you haven't heard, I always, and I mean always, have the last word. I am the social pariah turned messiah. I am the misfit that doesn't know when to quit. I am the man without the plan. I have the brass balls to say it all. And in case you haven't heard, I always, and I mean always, have the last word. Okay, <laughs> what's up, everybody? <clears throat> yes, I'm still a wrestling channel. Um, I know I've been doing a lot more gaming stuff because, to be honest, it's a lot easier to put out. And it's been a lot easier to stomach than the WWE the last few weeks. And I promised I was not going to try to be a smart. But dear God. Now, I'm not downing the product overall. I think it's been pretty good. I think AJ and Shinsuke has been fantastic. And I'm in the minority. Whereas it wasn't the finish I wanted. But the finish at the last pay-per-view was not bad. It furthered the storyline. And I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I said it during the pay-per-view, and I said it during the review show. It was going to lead into a last man standing match. Now, we had all the nonsense leading up to it, and Shinsuke's been amazing. I love him as a heel. The no-speak-English-when-it's-convenient thing is perfect for him, and given that his English isn't the greatest. Uh, it's fine. It's just the accent, and it's understandable. And they're playing that really well. And the whole segment where they sat down and did the contract signing, that was great. But, so yeah, we have money in the bank here Sunday. And happy Father's Day to all the, the fathers out there. Um, and I don't think I did a video at the time, so a belated happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. But uh, we got a decent pay-per-view. The money in the bank match is always fun. And we have an overall interesting show. But I'm going to try to keep this video short because I have to stream tonight and I need my voice. <laughs> For those of you that only watch the wrestling content, and you guys have been the ones that have been around since day one, so thank you. You're, you're awesome. And my newcomers that have been tuning in primarily to catch their uploads of the Twitch streams and then the Let's Plays, which I'm going to touch on at the end of the video because I'm a little behind on one of those. Uh, thank you. I hope you enjoy the wrestling content too. If wrestling's not your forte... Check out the other stuff on the channel. Um, I have a new series I am working on. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how I want to approach it because we have enough people that do the angry, screaming, booby stuff. Um, again, James Rolfe and Doug Walker are kind of the front runners on that. We don't need a million copycats. But just to say it, I have an idea for a series I want to do called Nostalgia Goggles. Play on the fact that I have glasses and I have the logo in my head. I'm just not great with graphic art, so I gotta figure out if I can make it. If you don't know where I'm going, I wanna spell out goggles, G O, and then the two G's in the middle with the pair of glasses. And that'll lead into it, but it's gonna be more of looking back at stuff. My generation, and I'm technically a millennial, I'm 36, which to me is weird and I'm considered a millennial, but I was born right at that end point in 82. So there's a lot of things that, again, I, I don't consider myself a traditional millennial. Um, I think more of what the Oregon Trail generation is the term I like. But we have all the crap we liked when we were younger, and kind of similar to how Doug Walker does in Nostalgia Critic. But I want to expand that into gaming, into old school wrestling, more broader spectrum, and it'd be kind of educational and informative. So I'm kind of seeing where I want to go with that before I launch it. So that one aside, and the Let's, play, the let's Plays, I can talk, and the uh, Twitch streams aren't going anywhere because I have a ton of fun doing those. But let's get into Money in the Bank, my predictions. I'm going to cover the two matches that have the most ludicrously stupid, workless, pointless, and idiotic builds. And that's Sami Zayn versus uh, I want to <laughs> Apollo Crews 2.0. What's this, Bobby Lashley? Uh, dear God, WWE, could you learn how to book black wrestlers? Because those both guys are phenomenally talented and have great physiques. But they both stand in the ring with the stupidest smile on their face, just taking it. And then the other one is Daniel Bryan and Big Cass. I just, both these uh, feuds are just stupid to me, okay? I'm just going to be honest. I don't like either one of them. I'm not sold on Lashley yet, but I'm not against Lashley because right now it's all booking. But let's start out with Sami Zayn and Bobby Lashley. This entire feud is ass, okay? Part of my French. I'm not going to swear a lot. 
But nothing about this feud is good. Nothing. Nothing at all. It's build up is dumb. The three sister deal where it was men in drag just made Bobby Lashley look like an idiot. Sami Zayn doesn't look like he's into it at all. Lashley is clearly not into it. In fact, the best part with this whole feud was this past Monday where clearly the two of them didn't give a shit. And you can clearly tell they know this feud, the story, everything about it is bad. And they had fun with it. And that was enjoyable. When wrestlers know the story is complete crap and they just roll with it and do their own thing, that kind of makes it fun. But I hate everything about this feud. It's pointless. It's a filler feud. It's not furthering either character. It's dumb. You know, you get accusations of stolen valor. You get the sister deal. It doesn't make Lashley endearing because he's just looking like an idiot the whole time. It's not building really the right kind of heat on Sami Zayn. Now, if they didn't approach this as a cartoon, <laughs> for lack of a better word, and you could have went with the Stolen Valor accusations and really built proper heat on Zane. This could have worked, but you didn't. This was like a bad cartoon. And that's just water today. No sponsors. <laughs> but I no interest in this match. This feud wasn't built up properly, and I'll get to the other one in a second because it's also just the stupidest reason for a feud. Uh, so who do I think is going to win this match? I honestly don't care. I want this feud over. I'm just going to rejoice that the feud is over. But I honestly think, given all the dumb buildup, and I don't think they're going to keep this feud going, I feel like this is a one and done. Bobby Lashley is going to win. Realistically, if you look at somebody, and I like Sami Zayn. I liked him better as a face. I don't like him as a heel. I like Zayn. Uh, the, the underdog from the underground shtick really worked for me and resonated for me with him. But it's not believable. If you look at their two physiques, that he would really out a clean win at least over Lashley. And granted, you had Rey Mysterio win the WCW Championship and the WWE Championship in unrealistic looking matches. Wrestling doesn't have to be realistic. You know, like having a 10 year old at WrestleMania become tag team champion. Uh, so I'm not even knocking it on that. And I just want this feud done. I want. Lashley to win, send Zayn running, put him back with uh, Kevin Owens and just they do their thing until you eventually break them up like you were teasing and then backed off on, which is good because I don't think either of them have anything going right now where you want to split them. I don't know, maybe put them in the tag team title picture. But that would make sense. <laughs> so yeah, Lashley's going to win. I think this feud will be done. For the love of God, it better be done. Now, the second match I don't care about because the feud and the buildup and everything about it is just stupid. Like I said before, it was Big Cass and Daniel Bryan. This feud is literally, I'm tall and better than you. I'm tall and I'm, you know, I'm a better, better wrestler than you. I was injured and I didn't get the uh, attention that you got when you came back from your injury. This feud is stupid. I don't care. Their last match sucked. It just felt like a filler throwaway match. This feud is filler throwaway. It's like they don't know what to do with Daniel Bryan. Part of that is his contract's running out in September, and we just had the recent trash talking on Twitter with the UFC fighter to beat CM Punk, who I do want to talk about, but I want to keep this video short. I figured you guys will watch more of these if I keep them shorter, and I don't want to go on so many rabbit trails. But, uh... Yeah, I don't. I think Daniel may be going, or they're setting something up where he's until he signs that contract, they're not going to give him a big push, which I don't blame them from a business standpoint. But this feud is worthless. Daniel Bryan will win. Um, it's just the way it's been built up. Cass has been a traditional heel, pulling the heelish tactics and everything else. So I think Daniel's going to win. I don't care about this match either. So those are two of the I don't care. This is stupid, pointless throwaway matches for the show. Now, because I forgot about this one, and I don't know why this one's on the kickoff, but the other one's on the main show. SmackDown's tag team title uh, is now on the kickoff. Remember when the Usos were champions and the SmackDown tag team titles had some, like, respect? Beverage Farm remembers. But we have the Bludgeon Brothers going against Gallows and Anderson, the Good Brothers. Neither tag team benefits from a loss here. 
But for the love of God, they've been around for so long. They're on SmackDown. I want to see the Bullet Club or whatever they want to call the AJ Styles and, you know, the club. I thought maybe Balor Club on Raw, but they never pulled the trigger, so maybe something here. But I want Gallows and Anderson to win. I want them to have a good run as tag team champions. I think you can have them pull an upset roll. Because they got the last few weeks on SmackDown a couple upset, like, roll-up pin victories over the Bludgeon Brothers. And they've done a good job at making the Bludgeon Brothers look strong, like as far as like they're a powerhouse. Now, they're not going to be Braun Strowman, so I'm hoping they're not trying to, you know, do repeat the process. There's a phrase I want to use here, and I can't remember what it is. <laughs> Somebody else put it in the comments. Uh, catch something twice, and I don't remember the phrase, so I apologize for that. Obviously, I don't write a huge script down. But I think this could be a good feud. I want to see Gallows and Anderson win. And I don't mind if this, over the next couple months or next few weeks on SmackDown, the titles go back and forth a bit. Uh, I think this feud could carry, if not into summer... Yeah, it could carry into SummerSlam. We're already in June, so we have one more pay-per-view in July, and then August is SummerSlam. So yeah, carry this over and have like the final feud uh, blow-off match be at SummerSlam. You know, do something good, WWE? And so... I want to see Gallows and Anderson win. I want them to have a little bit of a title run, get some recognition, some prominence, and then back and forth. I'm not I like I like how they're booking the Bludgeon Brothers. I'm not buying the gimmick though. It's too rock and roll era wrestling, like <laughs> the Bushwhackers, who are a phenomenal tag team. You know that kind of era though, where the stuff that really doesn't fly anymore. It feels too goofy of a gimmick. Then again. Rizango is a goofy gimmick, but Fashion Police is still the funniest damn thing. So, it could work. I don't know why that match is on the kickoff show. It shouldn't be. But I would like to see Gallows and Anderson win. I don't. I honestly don't know who will win. Like, I'm confident WWE is going to put Lashley over, and I'm confident they're going to put Daniel Bryan over. Um, because I don't think either feud needs to go further. I don't think either feud is working as far as drawing attention. But I could be wrong. Uh, but... I definitely don't know what direction they're going to go with the uh, current feud here between uh, the Bludgeon Brothers and Gallows and Anderson. I want Gallows and Anderson to win because they're both phenomenally talented and have been just crapped on their entire time here in the WWE. So I cover Daniel Bryan and Cass, uh, Lashley and Zane, and the SmackDown belt. We have one more match that's just a, I don't care, but thank God he's not in a title match, and that's Roman Reigns versus Jinder Mahal. I have mixed feelings on this one. The feud came out of nowhere. It was just gender. Oh, I'm feuding with Roman now. It just it had really no proper start. But these two have beat the living hell out of each other backstage and in the ring. It's been kind of fun, if I'm going to be honest. Now, ironically enough, I think it's one of my most viewed videos. It was the Undertaker Roman Reigns, my reaction video to it from the when I first started doing the uh, channel, uh, WrestleMania 32. Or 33, because, yeah, the last year was 34, this past one. I complimented Brains. I thought did a good job. So, the guy has talent. He's awful as a face. He's got no charisma. I don't want him as champion. I've made that abundantly clear. I'm not here to crap on him right now. Because Jinder, I also don't want as a champion. He has no... He doesn't have no charisma. His push, I think, he suffers. They're two of the same. Jinder got a push because of their deal in India. It hurt the product, so they got smart and pulled the title off of him, and it seems like they're learning a little bit with Roman, too. Jinder does well as the foreign aristocrat heel, which is a tired trope, but Jinder does it well. I don't really think he's great in the ring. I think he clearly got away with taking steroids, but I acknowledge I can 100% be wrong there, and I hope I'm wrong. But back me. <laughs> Gotta be honest. So, you know, this match could be good. They've beaten the hell out of each other. The one Singh brother that's healthy, and I forget his name, because <laughs> bananas and pajamas, they look alike. Uh, they've done really good at, at, as far as making these two hate each other. I don't think anyone necessarily cares about the match, because I don't think anyone outside their most hardcore fans care about either of these two wrestlers right now. 
So this is that other, like, who cares match, but this one I think has more potential to be interesting. Because I just want to see them beat the snot out of each other, and neither one of them is involved in a belt right now, which is the best part. That's the only reason why I put this a step above Cass and Brian and Lashley and Zayn, because this one at least, they're guys I don't really care about that aren't being shoved into the title scene. So I honestly, because it's freaking Roman and the WWE still hasn't quite learned their lesson, Roman's going to win, everybody. Let's just be honest. Now, I was thankfully wrong at WrestleMania and thankfully wrong at the greatest greatest Royal Rumble and was pissed at the match at uh, between him and Samoa Joe. This isn't the main event. WWE, for the love of God, this shouldn't be the main event. Your main event should be, has to be, needs to be the one main title that's being defended. I mean, you have your secondary belts being defended because you, for whatever reason, don't make Brock actually defend his belt because you want to piss on CM Punk. Who, by the way, can he stop doing UFC now? He's 0-2. He's not impressive. I've seen the pipe bomb. I've seen some of his stuff back in the day because I didn't watch wrestling when he was a thing. Likewise, I didn't really see a lot of Daniel Bryan, so I didn't get the popularity until I saw Bryan wrestle since he came back, and I understand. Punk's good as a wrestler, but I, to me, he's overrated. You can hate on me for that. I don't think he's a bad wrestler. I'd like to see him go do Ring of Honor because there's no way in hell he's going back to WWE or Impact if you want to go at least TV-wise a step above. But I got went on my rabbit trail here. So, uh, yeah, um, Roman's going to win. I don't care who wins. I don't, I'm not a big fan of either guy. Um, I think Jinder would benefit more because he seems to be more at least involved in trying to do things, whereas Roman's just kind of stagnant right now because that's where I was going. Jinder hasn't caused people to walk out during a main event. Jinder hasn't caused thousands of boos and this match sucks and yay volleyball or beach ball whatever the hell it was at Wrestlemania uh, Ginger just had some god awful matches with Randy Orton uh, that stupid Punjabi prison match was the dumbest thing ever but Ginger I'm, I'm holding less hate on because I don't it's not it's not your fault when you're pushed because of a certain ethnicity or a certain business dealing Likewise, Roman, it's not his fault, but I, I just, I'm pissed more with him because the WWE just refuses to learn their damn lesson. And if anything, this could be, maybe, it should have been with his feud, feuding like a year ago with, with Braun, this could be that catalyst that pushes Roman over the edge and begins a proper heel turn. Because again, I think Roman would work as a heel. As long as he's not out there with dead-eyed stare and complete lack of charisma going suckering succotash. Yeah, I watched that interview, that promo finally. And dear God, it was one of the worst promos I've ever seen. It was worse than the Shockmaster. It was worse than his promo with John Cena uh, this past year where Cena ate him alive. Ah. <laughs> but, so again, I think because I, until they stop booking him the way they have been, and again, granted, he's lost to Brock, beat Samoa Joe, he had no business winning that match, and that match sucked. This match will likely suck too, but these two have done a good job beating the hell out of each other. And if it's middle of the mid card match, if it's a the piss break match, and I'm expecting it to be, and they just beat the hell out of each other with tables and chairs, whatever, I could go with that. And again, Roman's going to come out on top. I don't think I need to say any more about this match. Now, I'm not going to the Money in the Bank matches yet. I'll save those for the, uh, towards the end. Uh, so let's talk about it. I talked about the SmackDown Tag Team titles. The Raw Tag Team titles are being defended. Uh, and I'm on a CBS who's uh, got the match card. And they don't have the Raw Tag Team titles, but to my knowledge, they're being defended. Whether it's the pre-show, which this one warrants being a pre-show given their opponent. Or if it's on the main card, um, I expect it to be there. It's the B Team, so it's the former Miz Taraj. And I kind of like that they're getting a push. Because they're guys that have been around, they feel like they've paid their dues. Much like Curtis Axel, who's still getting pissed on. Who I want to see break his streak over Baron Corbin. 
I'm waiting for that to happen. That's obviously not going to happen at the pay-per-view. Uh, but we have the B team taking on the deleters of deleters of worlds. The tag team I've been waiting for since uh, Matt came back at last year's Wrestle at Matt WrestleMania 32, 33. Uh, obviously, the deleters of worlds are going to win. There's no way in hell they're going to put the tag team titles on the B team. It's just they're basically like. Slater and Rhino too. I don't think they're ever going to be taken super seriously. I feel like the Raw Tag Team Division stagnant right now. You know, you could put Owens and Zayn against the Deleters of Worlds and have a good feud. Or the Authors of Pain or freaking Sanity. Where the hell are they? I mean, they're on SmackDown, but they're not on SmackDown. <laughs> two, mo- two months ago or beginning of May whenever it was they had the promo for them and we've heard nothing since so where are they uh, till you get kind of your next NXT group which I feel like will be the authors of pain on Raw uh, in the picture and, and built up and what the hell happened at a revival the WWE just shit on them and again they're not my go to tag team I'm not, I'm not not fans of them but they're good they're a good tag team. You turned them into the new Gallows and Anderson. Are ta- is Raw where tag teams go to die? Right. <laughs> I mean, SmackDown is where the division goes to die, but at least teams get over and get booked decently at times. <laughs> Ascension. Oh no, Ascension's on Raw now too, aren't they? Good God, yeah. Raw's where you go to die, apparently. <laughs> the A show. But yeah, uh, it's going to be Matt and, and uh, Bray winning. They're not splitting them up anytime soon. Not if they have any damn brains whatsoever. Meltzer and a few other people put reports out over the last couple of months of a rumored potential plan to split them up by having Bray turn on Matt. Don't do that. Bray works great as being part of the Woken universe. Uh, let Matt have more control and let him pull the trigger on expanding and building that universe. You have a cash cow, a gold mine. You have someone that has the Midas touch creatively. And yes, the broken universe was the stupidest thing ever, but it was amazing. <laughs> what was it? George Wa- oh, excuse me. George Washington was a giraffe. I watched that. It was the dumbest thing, but I couldn't stop laughing. It's okay to have that. Oh, let them do their thing. And maybe they're getting there. Right now, they seem too busy on trying to figure out Lashley's role and obviously a gimmick pay per view, so you got to push that for the until the pay per view. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to go long on this. The leaders of roles are going to win. I don't know how long this match will be. I feel like this will probably be on the pre show, so both tag matches are on the pre show. Because lately, they haven't only done one match on the pre show, but who knows? Especially now with being dual branded pay per views, so there's more matches overall. So they tend to draw things out a little bit longer. So I'm assuming it's going to start at 7, end at 11, 11.30. I will do a review on the actual pay-per-view. Um, it probably won't be till middle of the week because I Father's Day Sunday, plus uh, I have a doctor's appointment at 9 o'clock in the morning Monday, so I won't be up till 12, 1 o'clock in the morning reviewing this stuff. So, But I will do it. So anyways, rabbit trail long enough here. The leaders of the world, Matt and Bray, are going to win. Not, not, there's no way they're putting the titles on the B team. Okay, so I got those out of the way. So, to my knowledge, there's no U.S. title match at the pay-per-view. I don't believe one has been announced or hinted at yet. That could change, so I'm going to leave that one off the card. Let's talk about the Intercontinental title match. This one I am so looking forward to. It's Seth Rollins versus Elias. And let me tell you exactly why I'm looking forward to this. I feel like this is the point where they're going to finally give Elias a proper push. Oh, again, I I know you're all like, yeah, we've heard this before. So have I. Elias has the ability to be Miz version 2. Not as good. Nobody's going to be the Miz. The Miz is the Miz. Okay, I mean, just the Miz is amazing. Uh, He wasn't always that way. If you remember the wrist thing where you had to read the the telephone number for doing the diva search, 
Elias, I feel like, has gotten himself great heel heat with the fans. His shtick of doing the guitar thing was fun as hell in NXT. When he first showed up backstage on Raw, it was great, and it's gotten better and better. Uh, Seth is so over because there's no one else. He won't put anything on Braun right now. Seth is above the IC title. Seth is, is The IC title is that place for your top mid-card guy and your guy that you're not sure is quite ready for the main, the top pitcher. So you have your main event, your title guys, that all are always constantly, you know, a step away from being in, in a title match. Then you have your mid card and your lower card guys. Uh, traditionally, lower card belt would be something like the U.S. title to me, but since it's the like mid card belt on SmackDown, I can't really call it that. But uh, Seth is definitely above the mid card. He's talented. Uh, dude, dude was fantastic in the ring, albeit uh, to me he's a little unsafe at times, but I can't hold that against him. Uh, accidents happen. It's not fair. But I feel like this is going to be Elias getting over, especially after Seth broke the guitar last week at the Go Home Show. And yeah, speaking of which, Go Home Show, Raw finally had a good Go Home Show because Raw sucked the last couple of weeks to the point where I just kind of tuned in to catch highlights. SmackDown has been above average, average, so they are okay, but I think Raw finally nailed it with the go-home show, where uh, Elias was out singing, talking crap, and then Seth came out, Elias rants, so Seth, you know, because Elias had this nice guitar, I'm going to play after I win the title with this guitar, and of course Seth broke the guitar. So I feel like this is the launching ground for Elias, I, he has a lot of potential, I know a lot of fans, a lot of uh wrestling fans on YouTube, on Twitter, or even on Facebook, everybody, you know, he's highly liked as a heel. I think he could work as a face. Um, actually, Elias really feels like a modernized version of the Honky Tonk Man. Or possibly a modernized Jeff Jarrett, minus the goofiness. So I'm hoping, I'm predicting Elias, because I feel like why is he in this match otherwise? Because Seth could fight anybody. He could fight Finn. Although he's, I think, in the money in the bank match, which we're going to get to in a couple minutes. Uh, he could really be facing anybody for the IC title. But I feel like they're putting Elias in this spot because they're going to give Elias the belt and then Seth is going to move on to something else. Uh, rumor has it, uh, the hell's his name? Uh, Dean Ambrose will be back soon. <laughs> and they're still looking to do a heel turn for him. I feel like they're better off doing that on Roman. I would love to see... Like, in Roman's shtick with uh, Jinder, Seth comes out to help. It, Roman ends up losing. And Roman just turns around and spares Seth. And, or something. It would be nice to be the launching point. And it really could get good heel heat for Roman if he turns on Seth. Like, flip the script. Seth did it to them. Have Roman be the guy. But, yeah. I, Elias, is, I think, is going to win. I'm, I, this is the other one I'm not 100% on. Most of my predictions have been a pretty... Solid, like that's who's going to win. But uh, this one is up in the air to me, but I'm picking Elias because I feel like this is the launching point to see what he can do on the upper mid card. And so, yeah, I'm going with Elias. And before I get into the. Oh, yeah, let's do the women's belts and then I'll do the, the men's, the SmackDown uh, Championship, and then we'll do the Money in the Bank. Uh, these will be quick because <laughs> I'll do the Raw one first. Because this ties into who I'm picking for to, to win the Money in the Bank for the women. Raw, it's Nia Jax for, versus Ronda Rousey. I want Nia to win. Because I honestly don't feel like Ronda... Ronda had... I, I don't think it's the best match on the card. I'm sorry. I still stand by that. I'm in the minority there at WrestleMania. I thought them... I had... After doing a second viewing and letting go of my... You know, I don't like watching Stephanie, and I don't like the McMahon gimmick matches. Letting go of that and watching it again, it was a good match for what it was. And I think it was a good launching point for Ronda. I don't think it was the best match on the card. I don't think it was the best women's match on the card. I thought Asuka and Charlotte was a better match. And the winner of this match is also going to play into who I'm picking for the, uh, from that match for the, who's winning the women. Uh, but Ronda's going to beat Nia. I feel like this is setting up a future match. I don't know if they're going to go all the way, wait till Mania for this cash in that I'm getting to. And you probably already know who I'm picking to win the women's money in the bank. But either Ronda's winning today, or today, to, to this pay per view, because uh, I'm uploading this on Friday. Hopefully, my editing software works. 
or it, this is going to have some weird finish, and this will have another match at, say, SummerSlam, and Ronda will win it there. But I want Nia to win, but I feel like because of the amount of social uh, social media, amount of traditional media, and just the overall investment they've put into Ronda Rousey, she's going to get the belt, if not Sunday, then at least by SummerSlam. So I'm picking Ronda Rousey to win. Now, SmackDown side, good booking here. Incredible booking. I'm mixed feelings at Carmella winning because it just made Asuka look worse. But Carmella winning is a great... Tra- she's a transitional champion, if you didn't figure it out. Uh, this one, I'm 110% confident. Asuka's beating Carmella. There's no way in the hell... I. Because the build-up is Asuka, you've lost your edge. You're not, you know, you lost in that tag team match, even though she's not the one that lost. I think if they're referring to the one I'm thinking of, uh, she got out maneuvered at WrestleMania, and you know, and Carmella's done everything in her power to make you hate her guts as champion. She's a phenomenal heel for what it's worth. Uh, so, but Asuka's going to beat the hell out of her. I don't think this will be a long match. I think this is going to be kind of Carmella's going to try to cheat and do a couple things. Asuka's just going to say, nope, and then win. They've been building Carmella up as trashing Asuka. They've been downplaying Asuka's confidence. Uh, they're going to use this as like the overcoming the uh, adversity angle for Asuka. She's going to win and have a very nice long reign as women's champion on SmackDown. And before I get to the money in the bank, because you're going to be confused by who I pick for the women and why I say Asuka's going to have a long reign on SmackDown, uh, I'm going to go to the other main belt being defended, which is the WWE Championship, which AJ Styles versus Shinsuke in a last man standing. <laughs> Basically, whoever can get up after getting kicked in the dick enough times. Every time I see these two in the ring, or at least Shinsuke, all I can think of is Dragon Ball Z abridged, the Revenge of Cooler movie they did, where Vegeta just gets kicked in the dick over and over in the movie, and it's just sitting there in agony going, why are you kicking me in the dick? That's been this feud. I've enjoyed it. And again, I know a lot of people hate it on the finish of the last uh, pay-per-view. But not for nothing, it was the most realistic finish to me. If two dudes simultaneously kicked each other to nuts as hard as they can, they're not getting up in a 10 count. Hell, you're not getting up in a 20 count. I felt it was a dumb finish as far as it's a wrestling match. We want a clear winner. We didn't get it. We have a last stand, last stand, last stand Manning, yeah. Last man standing match. My pick here is Shinsuke. There's been the gloss, the couple of draws. I feel like, I don't feel like this is the end of the feud. Because usually with these feuds, you win two or three two out of three, like, finished-wise, or they usually have some odd number uh, feud. So it's like 1-0-2, one, one, oh, and two, or if you're soccer, it's win, ties, losses, or hockey, how are they doing? Uh, but, so I feel like Shinsuke is going to win this. This is going to be, pro- this should be match of the night. If this was in New Japan, this has the capability of being a six-star match, but because it's in the WWE, and Meltzer seems to have a hate boner for the WWE, um, it'll be a three, four, maybe four and a half star match, <laughs> hopefully. Um, it's my pick to be the match of the night, out, uh, outshining the Money in the Bank matches. I'm putting a lot on this match. I think at the end of the day, they're going to beat the hell out of each other. Shinsuke is going to come out on top. I don't feel like this will be the point where he does the semi like, hey, I respect you thing. Because I don't think it's the last match. I think Shinsuke is going to have the belt for a bit. I could see this carrying over and they separate for a few months and then have another match maybe at next year's Mania or even just by Survivor Series. Someone else is going to step in. Samoa Joe should. Samoa Joe and Shinsuke have had amazing matches in NXT. If you got a chance to see them, they were great. So, yeah, I'm picking Shinsuke, okay? I don't mind if either one wins, but I'd like to see Shinsuke get the win he should have gotten at Mania. But uh, this is going to be a very messy, very well-executed match. Messy by, like, they're just going to beat the snot out of each other. This match won't end in the ring. I think at some point it's going to end with them doing some kind of move off the ring, off the apron, the entrance ramp, 
through a table, through whatever nonsensical crap is ringside. They're going to be sitting there counting, and it's going to be like they both try to get up. One of them's going to fall down, and the other gets up, which in this case I think it's going to be Shinsuke. I just feel like it's his time. Otherwise, I feel like this is this whole rivalry is wasted time if they don't eventually at least swap the belt once or twice. But yeah, those are your three title matches. I already did the tag team title matches. So I think as far as official matches, and again, if I missed the U.S. title match, I apologize. If it ends up being one during the pay-per-view, I'll obviously cover it in my review. But the first one I will do is the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. And this one features Ember Moon, Charlotte Flair, Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, Natalia, Lana, Naomi, and Sasha. Charlotte's winning. Just, I don't want her to win. I honestly would like to see Ember Moon win because she's fantastic. And it's different. And I'm tired of seeing the same damn people all the time. Now, my first thought was possibly Natalia because she's friends with Ronda. She's actually one of the people that helped train Ronda in real life for wrestling, obviously not MMA. <laughs> but, uh, and it would be cool to kind of have a friend versus friend, you know, feud. Those tend to work out well. Benoit and Jericho were friends in real life for a while, or at least they were wrestling friends. I don't know how close they were outside the ring. So they worked well together. Foley and Funk, same thing. They worked well together. So these kind of matches can work. But I'm picking Charlotte because they've been talking about doing Charlotte versus Ronda at next year's WrestleMania. Well, the Money in the Bank allows you to challenge either champion, which is why I said Asuka's going to win, but Asuka's going to have a long reign because Charlotte's not cashing in on SmackDown. Charlotte will cash in on Raw. I don't know if they're going to wait till Mania to do this match. I'm not sure. And also, as much as I think they're going to give Ronda the belt on Raw, I can see Charlotte, Denia winning, and Charlotte overcoming Nia to build Charlotte up as like the champion of champions. Because Nia never got booked like she did on NXT, which is kind of disappointing. As far as being like monster heel or monster, you know, wrestler. And again, I think it's because they're trying to get away from using the fact she's a larger woman as you know, just making her heel. But honestly, work with it. She's probably not the most talented wrestler she's a really sweet person in real life from everything i've seen on social media and i wish her nothing but the best but uh book her strong i mean you've done better now she's a champion finally but i don't think alexa's getting back in the picture anytime soon she doesn't need to uh but again it's charlotte because charlotte's gonna cash in at some point and wind up at mania facing ronda rousey for the raw women's championship either as champion or as contender Depending on how they want to build Ronda up, if they don't put the belts on her Sunday, it could be a thing where Charlotte comes in and wins the belt. Uh, not Sunday. I don't think they're going to cash in the same day. Although, I think one of the two should. I think it would be entertaining. Uh, but, uh, she's going to end up on, you know, facing Ronda at WrestleMania, and this will be the means to make that happen. I think it'll be a good match. All the competitors in there, for the most part, are solid wrestlers. Um, wait, no Bailey? Yeah, no Bailey. Good. That means we don't have to worry about the damn thing with Sasha and Bailey. Although we could see Bailey come out and try to help Sasha backfire because they've never pulled the trigger on making Bailey or Sasha a heel. Again, having a feud, not feud, being a giant waste of time, which is something the WWE is good at lately. But I don't see any other outcome. I think it's going to be Charlotte. I would like to see Ember Moon, but I think it's going to be Charlotte for the reason I said before. Now let's move on to the other match of the night, and I think it's the last one I need to cover here. The men's match. Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, The Miz, Rusev, Bobby Roode, Kevin Owens, a New Day member, and Samoa Joe. This one's tougher. I want to say Braun. I think everybody's saying Braun based on how he's been booked. The thing is, he doesn't have to win this to still look strong because he doesn't have to lose the match. We don't know when the hell Brock is going to be back. Now rumors saying he's not booked for any, even up to SummerSlam. So I don't know what they're doing here. I'm tired of Brock as champion. He's going to have the most fake title reign record ever. When you defend the title six times a year, I'm not impressed, if that. But... Everything in me says Braun, 
because we want to put it's obvious they want to put the belt on Braun. Now they went comic book superhero levels of over the top, and it was it almost made me cringe a little. But I, I freaking love Braun. He's the best thing in, in the WWE right now. But a couple weeks ago, he fought Bobby Roode, and Bobby Roode stacked the uh, ladder between the ring apron and the, the table, and all Braun and he slid under it. And Braun, you know, he looks at Braun and goes, "I got the chair, t- chair table in the way." Chair, or, I still got the thing wrong. Ladder in the way. What are you gonna do? And Braun just boom and breaks the ladder in half. It was so corny, like comic book corny, but it was great. I want Braun with it. I want Braun to just show up and beat the snot out of Lesnar. Because of out of all the wrestlers in the ring, he's the one I actually look at and go, he can, especially since he was a bodybuilder and a bouncer, I feel like he's one of the few that physically could actually take Brock. I mean, he took a legit punch from Brock a few pay-per-views ago. And got a little woozy but shook it off. But uh, <sighs> Samoa Joe don't need it. Because he can just get into the title picture by prox- virtue of being Samoa Joe. I don't th- know what they're going to do with the New Day yet. Because I feel like the New Day and the Miz are going to end up interfering with each other. Because they've been feuding. And I don't feel like they're ready to do Daniel Bryan versus the Miz yet. Although, why the hell not? That needs to happen. That's been three years in the making. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got a dark horse on this one that I'm picking. I Let me clarify. I want Braun. For the love of God, please let it be Braun. I want Braun with the belt. For a while. I want you to make me hate seeing him with the belt. Which I don't know will happen. But Braun is hilarious. He's got a charisma j- just that you don't expect from him. He's got a sense of humor. And he's a badass. But I feel like because they've been sitting on a cash cow that that's going to die if they don't do something with it. Rusev is going to win. That's my pick. I'm picking Rusev. And what I could honestly see, which would be funny as hell, if Rusev wins, because actually I don't know if they will do the Money in the Bank before the title matches. I hope they do. I like when they do that, at least for the men's, because it leaves suspicion of are they going to cash in, like Dean Ambrose did a couple years ago. Uh, But (laughs) what I would love to see is just AJ and Shinsuke are just dead. Like, you know, they're done. Shinsuke gets up, has the belt. As much as I don't want him to lose the belt, Rusev's music hits. Rusev clocks him with the briefcase, pins him, and gets the belt. Rusev Day is over. To the fact, to the point now where you have Lana Day t shirts, and for some reason Lana's Russian accent's disappearing. I don't know why. If you don't push R- Rusev at some point, it's going to die. And your cash cow is going to croak. So just for that reason alone, I feel like they're going to just throw a curveball and Rusev's going to win the Money in the Bank match. I'm okay with either because Braun's still going to wind up in the title pitcher because he's Braun. He's over. I would want, I want Braun to win just so there's a clear t- path to the title. Because it literally can go, I'm inserting myself in the match. Well, no, briefcase. <laughs> Either briefcase or I kill you anyways, because it's Braun. Or push Rusev, even if it's for like a month. Either push Rusev as a, as a heel with the Rusev Day thing that we're all cheering for, because it's hilarious. Or just have him beat the heel that just took the belt and, be, and make him proper face. Just do something. And that's my pick. So those are my picks for all the pay-per-view matches. And again, I don't know if there's a U.S. title match. I haven't come across anything confirming there is one. Likewise, there's no confirmation. I haven't seen confirmation that there's a Raw title match, but I'm pretty damn sure they said there's going to be one uh, at the pay-per-view after they had the little uh, uh, over-the-top tournament deal. I wanted to call it a uh, Battle Royale. So, but... Again, Elias will be champion by the end of the night. I think Rusev's getting money in the bank. Charlotte's, down, I believe, is getting money in the bank. Went over everything. That's the pay-per-view, folks. I'm legit looking forward to it, minus a few matches that I consider piss break matches. Even the matches I'm not looking forward to. Lashley and Zayn could be a good match. Brian and Cass could be a good match. I just don't care. The feuds are stupid. They're artificial as hell. They have no justified reason. Granted... Wrestling's a male soap opera. I, I 
I've acknowledged this on my radio show. I do it to university on a couple episodes of the show. Where we talked about wrestling. And again, the focal point is the in-ring action, at least for most wrestling. WWE seems to think the focal point is everything else. If that's the case, tell a good story. That's why I don't care about Cass and Brian, Zayn, or uh, Lashley. I keep calling them Apollo, too. <laughs> and that's not because they look alike thing. Don't read that as racist. For the love of God, stop. <laughs> it has nothing to do with that. It's just the fact that they both stand there with the shit-eating grin on their face because the WWE doesn't know how to utilize either guy. I like Apollo. I thought he had great in-ring work and so much potential. His flaw is he's not good on the mic. That's on him to get better. I think he would do better going back to NXT and working on a better character, but whatever. That's not the point of this podcast or vlogcast, whatever you want to call it. But... I mentioned the top of the show about doing the nostalgia goggles. I don't have an ETA on that because I'm still kind of figuring out how I want to approach it. Uh, I've been doing a Let's Play, and it kind of got away from me a little because of summer semester and other things. So as I close out the podcast here, and again, if you're not into wrestling stuff, I'm done talking about wrestling. There's only about a couple minutes left of this anyways, so thanks for tuning in. If you're here for everything, awesome. I love you even more. But uh, <laughs> I am doing Darkwing Duck soon. I'm probably going to try to do a couple, record a couple episodes tomorrow, being Saturday, and then upload them over the next couple days. I just time got away from me. Got busy doing stuff for my summer classes. Uh, got a little burnt out on the Disney Afternoon Collection. I practiced a little, but to be honest, I haven't practiced a lot. I'm not that good at Darkwing Duck. But I doubt you're watching my Let's Plays because I'm great at video games. And I am good at video games. I just... I'm also stupid at them sometimes too, which I think makes for funnier videos. But hey, I just wanted to give everybody that's following me for that stuff just a heads up. I didn't forget. I'm still doing it. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Chocoboachokeslam is where you could find my live, my uh, Twitch streams. Do Wednesday night weeaboo trash, where if it's anime or anything anime-ish, and it's just garbage, I play it. <laughs> You'll see them on the YouTube channel here, usually the same night, because I can export directly. And then Friday nights, uh, starting potentially tonight, I'm launching a new series called What the Fridays. Um, I got a treat tonight. Uh, my Friday night streams are probably going to be shorter than my Wednesday night ones. I don't have the game log to do like four or five hour streams unless I'm going to play like a normal real game and where's the fun in that? I will do that from time to time. But uh, What the Fridays is pretty much anything I come across that's weird or I just feel like playing and I got a treat tonight because I got a game that's a knockoff of a knockoff on Steam. It's an alpha game so it's a little clunky but it's a knockoff of Fortnite which is a knockoff of PUBG. So original content, do not steal. I'm looking forward to that tonight. Um, expect that one to start streaming around 8, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. And again, if you can't make the live streams, no worries. It'll be on YouTube. But I want to thank you all for tuning in. Again, the wrestling stuff isn't going anywhere. I do have other wrestling stuff I'm working on. As my summer semester is ending in a couple weeks, so I'm going to get another episode of Great Moments and Bad Gimmicks going because I still want to talk about Macho Warrior Rick Hogan. And then we'll have other things coming up. Obviously, SummerSlam, whatever the hell they're doing in July. Um, so, yeah. Enjoy your summer, everybody. I'm here. I enjoy making content. Enjoy entertaining you. Spread the channel. And as always, in case you haven't heard, I always, and I mean always, have the last word. Peace out. Have a wonderful weekend. A happy Father's Day. Take it easy.